labor leisure trade off now this is a very important application in microeconomics in which you 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 try to find out how much labor you want to provide and how much leisure you want to have okay now typically any person doesn't want to work okay so typically labor is sort of a bad commodity while leisure everyone wants to have typically okay so leisure is is assumed to be an economic good more amount of leisure means an increase increased amount of happiness to you while less amount of labor would mean increased amount of leisure uh, increased amount of uh, happiness to you now as far as labor is concerned this is an economic bad okay now you only have 24 hours with you these 24 hours could be spent in leisure having fun and these 24 hours could be spent in labor okay well, this is not a discrete choice some amount of leisure some amount of labor you could have that is you might want to have like 8 hours of leisure or 8 hours of uh, 8 hours of labor you could have all all combinations of labor and leisure within this if you increase the amount of labor if you increase the amount of labor you're going to have more income okay and with that more income you can have more amount of consumption and consumption is going to give you more amount of happiness okay i am the the problem is here the problem comes with the monotonicity assumption as far as as far as labor is concerned now labor is an economic bad fine this is an economic bad and here monotonicity assumption fails more is not better more of labor is not better fine while leisure is good clear and this satisfies monotonicity assumption well the problem is that uh, you can't model economic bad so you have to model economic good so what we'll do is that we'll model leisure and whatever conclusions will draw for leisure they will help us to draw conclusions for its complementary good which is uh, which is labor okay so in case if i in case if i if i say you're having more of leisure now it will it will on the other side it will mean you're having less of labor huh now the point is modeling technique is of course that you're going to have you, you you are you're going to model economic good not economic bads okay now remember this that you have only 24 hours in total okay now you can have uh, uh, some some of the models they, they talk about suppose you have TRs also you can also work in that way but let's say you have 24 hours in total and you get wage rate W per hour so what is the maximum amount of leisure you can have in terms of hours 24 okay remember this we'll talk in terms of leisure and we'll infer in terms of labor fine so in case if I plot 24 here that means I can have at max 24 hours of leisure with this 24 hours of leisure it means that at the same time I am having zero amount of labor is that clear if I will say that I have 8 hours of say leisure well that would mean at the same time that I have 16 hours of labor is that clear so we'll talk about leisure and we'll infer about labor so remember this that leisure is increasing in this direction it is increasing in this direction while labor is increasing in this direction okay while labor is increasing in this direction is that clear now 
ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स यू हैव फॉर ईच आवर यू गेट डब्ल्यू वट इज द वट इज द मैक्सिम अमाउंट ऑफ इनकम यू कैन हैव एंड विद दैट इनकम हाउ मच ऑफ कंजम्पन यू कैन हैव सी यू हैव ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स फॉर ईच आर यू गेट डब्ल्यू सो ट्वेंटी फोर डब्ल्यू इज द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ इनकम यू कैन एवर हैव ओके एंड विद दिस इनकम यू कैन कंज्यूम सम अमाउंट ऑफ गुड्स सो इट इज ट्वेंटी फोर डब्ल्यू इज द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ इनकम और कंजम्पन यू कैन हैव नाउ द पॉइंट इज वट यू मीन बाय दिस ट्वेंटी फोर डब्ल्यू वाई हैव पुट इन हेयर at this 24w it means that you're working for 24 hours you're working for 24 hours would mean you're working for 24 hours while you are not having any leisure so your leisure is zero here while the amount of work which you're going to do is 24 as le- as labor is is increasing in this direction is that clear now if you join these two points you get this kind of curve okay this is the budget line for this let's say let me write this consumption here uh now you have to think in terms of what is the slope of this budget line okay now there are two commodities here the commodity is leisure this is one commodity and and consumption is the another commodity okay consumption of goods is the other commodity now to make things simple let's normalize the price of consumption to 1 okay see wherever in economics you normalizing anything it means that you are trying to decrease the importance of that okay i'm not concerned much about the price of consumption goods here because we have to uh, we, we we have to keep leisure and labor in spotlight and for that we have to talk about the price of leisure okay well what is the price of leisure you think about it price of leisure i don't know what the price of leisure is but what i know is that if i am not working i am having leisure but in case if i would not have a fun then in that case i would have earn at least w per hour so for example if i forgo 1 hour of leisure i would have earn w dollars okay because i would have spent my time in that in this model your 24 hours is spent either in leisure or in labor so if you are not consuming your time in terms of leisure it means that you are working and if you are working you are getting the wage rate at w per hour so the leisure is the the price of the leisure is the opportunity cost of not working okay sorry opportunity cost of working so what is an opportunity cost here the price of labor which is forgone and that is w so slope of the budget line in this case and why the slope of the budget line because you know this that you know this that the relative prices is is the sorry the the ratio of the relative prices that is your uh, w by pc it defines the slope of the budget line pc is of course one so w is the slope of the budget line okay we talk about and 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 supposedly in case of the indifference curves they they sort of look like these okay in case of the indifference curve look like this then this is the optimal choice which you have huh this is the optimal choice which you have so in that case you will be having this much amount of leisure and this much amount of consumption you'll have now in case if say if i'll say that you have the leisure of say l and uh, i don't know how to how to define define labor so what is the amount of labor which you will have labor would be 24 minus l is that clear so this is the way you'll model labor and leisure okay this is the labor leisure trade off and in the next video we're going to talk about the substitution effect and income effects in labor leisure choice model